So, if you recall uh, we were discussing regarding condensers and uh, initially I have shown you uh, in, um, in our uh, last lecture I have shown you uh, a power plant condenser which is also known as a surface condenser and we like to continue with surface condenser. But, uh, um, but uh, before doing so what I like to do I like to go back to my uh, previous lecture because uh, the last um, slide I have uh, told very important uh, uh, I have uh, supplied very important information to you I like to stress upon it. So, if I go back to my um, uh, previous lecture uh, this was the last slide of um, the previous lecture. So, here you see that uh, nacelt film condensation uh, I ha we have used. So, let me tell a, a few things regarding uh, this and then uh, again we will go back to the current lecture. So, you see the <coughs> nacelt film condensation theory is very unique theory in heat, e heat transfer. Sorry. So, what Nussel did Nussel first did this theory for a vertical flat plate. So, let us say this is a vertical flat plate and uh, this is this is a vertical flat plate and heat is being taken from this vertical flat plate and this this side there is vapor ok. So, vapor is getting condensed. So, we will get a film of condensation like this. I have shown an exaggerated view, but this film will be really thin and then he has made quite a few uh, assumptions and uh, uh, based on that assumptions he has uh, determined what could be the heat transfer coefficient and Nusselt number and also average Nusselt number. So, these analysis we have uh, I, he has again extended for a circular tube. So, the assumptions I like to tell certain thing regarding the assumption. The assumptions are the, fil the film is really very thin. So, that there is no, <coughs> no convection within the thin film and it is heat transfer is only due to conduction. From the wall to vapor heat transfer is taking place only due to condensation. Uh, only due to conduction that is one thing. Another thing uh, that there is no uh, shear uh, at the outer uh, at the interface of the vapor and liquid that means, the vapor is almost at the stationary condition or with a very low velocity. Why I am telling this because these are all important when we will try to uh, analyze a surface condenser and uh, other other assumptions which he, uh, he has made that the vapor is in saturated condition and the liquid film that is also not getting subcooled. These assumptions are <coughs> not always strictly applicable and people have devised methods by which they can take care of these assumptions. So, basically what you see that uh, the film which forms on the outside of the tube is very thin then it thickens out because all the films are collected and film is uh, become film become thicker and thicker and ultimately as a thick stream it falls from the bottom of the tube. And you know as I have told that heat transfer is due to conduction. So, this this liquid film that is the conduction resistance and that goes on increasing that goes on increasing as we move from the topmost point to the bottommost point of the tube. So, obviously, the tube will be most effective in condensing vapor at the topmost point and where almost no condensation of vapor will take place at the bottommost point. So, this is important and obviously, uh, that uh, for an engineer it is not good that we have got a thick film. So, I mean even there are uh, many methods for reducing the film thickness. And this is a simple formula from <coughs> all the properties and geometrical parameter it has come. 
and it is easy to use. So, people can use this thing. Uh, with uh, this few, with this few uh, uh, word, I can go back to the next slide or next lecture. So, this is my <coughs> current lecture which is surface condenser and if we go to the surface condenser. So, uh, I am showing some sort of a typical surface condenser of a steam power plant and there are quite a few points uh, I, I, I like to have your attention. Uh, you see this diagram which is taken from the net very carefully. So, this is showing the tube layout. First you see the tubes are laid in a very dense uh, configuration and the arrangement is uh, not in line, but staggered arrangement. These are all important. So, tubes are laid out in a staggered arrangement. So, this is very important. And in a um, uh, surface condenser of a steam power plant, how the tubes will be laid out, there are different patterns. So, some of the patterns I have shown here, again taking uh, from published literature I have shown here. But what is important and what I like you to uh, give some more attention, uh, please, it is like this that in a steam power plant, steam is condensing in the condenser and uh, steam is condensing in a condenser with the help of water which is taken from the ambient uh, atmosphere. So, the temperature of the cooling water could be 30 degree could be 25 degree and in cold country it could be 10, 15 degree even lesser than that. So, near that temperature if the steam has to condense then the steam pressure is sub atmospheric pressure. So, in part of the um, uh, uh, circulating fluid loop of a steam power plant the fluid is at, at a pressure higher than the atmospheric pressure and at part of the loop the pressure is below atmospheric pressure. So, what will happen? Air leakage will take place inside the uh, circulating loop. That means, when the steam will come to the condenser for condensation, it will have air along with it. Air is a non-condensable. So, what will happen? Uh, schematically again taking some sort of a figure from published literature I have shown. This is the cooling water. Uh, what is the cooling? This green color is the cooling water, red color is the tube wall. Uh, outside we can see the condensate film, but outside there will be a layer of air. That means, the air uh, quite dense uh, collection of air will be there and obviously, then we, we do not have any vapor mass or any vapor molecule steam molecule nearby. So, after some time the condensation will get hindered, more and more air will collect inside the condenser which is not getting condensed, which is not going out of the condenser and inside air uh, um, uh, <coughs> quantity content will increase. So, that will increase the pressure of the condenser. So, there are quite a few things. First thing it will reduce the uh, rate of heat transfer. Uh, some sort of a snowballing effect is there, more it reduces the uh, rate of heat transfer, more air um, accumulates and there will be pressure rise. So, if there is pressure rise, then the steam is not able to uh, expand uh, fully, so work done will be less and this is what we get to see in uh, summer situation that the power plant. <coughs> Uh, uh, capacity of producing work that reduces uh, partially this, this phenomena is responsible for this. Then what is the way out? Way out is that we have to take this air out. So, there are air extraction pumps, suppose this could be the location of the air extraction pump and from there air has to be continuously extracted from the um, condenser to maintain the vacuum. And this is a typical thing, this is a typical feature and the heat exchanger designer has to take care of this when 
he is concerned with the design of a condenser for a steam power plant application. So, let us proceed. Here I have shown two very uh, common situation of steam condensers and these are basically tube layout and here you see, here you see there will be some sort of, some sort of uh, greater density of uh, coolant tubes. So, here we will have more cooling capacity, more vapor will be cooled uh, and air can get separated from vapor very easily and then it will be taken out by some air extraction pump. So, it can be taken out from this bottom portion or it can be taken out from the central portion. The main uh, issue here is that we have to have good cooling where extra air extraction point is kept so that we are not taking out vapor, we are only taking out air. And also if you cool the air density will increase, so we have to handle lesser amount of air volume. So that is also a secondary point. So this is one of the very uh, unique design feature of our surface condensers. Okay. <clears throat> so let us with this let us, here I am showing this figure once again, I have shown it in my earlier lecture, here I am showing it once again. So, as I have told that though we like to have uh, <coughs> drop wise condensation for obvious reason of very high rate of heat transfer, we are unfortunate that we cannot sustain drop wise condensation on commercial tube surfaces. There are certain tubes which are costly, clean environment they can be used and they can sustain drop wise condensation for longer period, lot of research is going on. But that is not for your steam condensers, uh, steam power plant still we have film wise condensation. So, if we have got film wise condensation, water film or condensate film is forming. Then where that condensate film will go? Due to gravity it has to drain, that is what is, has been shown here. Now, if it drains, what happens? Where it will fall? It will fall in the hot well of the condenser ultimately which I have shown in our earlier lecture, but before that it will fall on the tube which is right below it. What is the effect? So, let us see what is the effect of it. So, <coughs> the effect has been shown here, this is the, this is a tube row, you, you will appreciate I have shown you the cross section of a power plant uh, heat exchange sorry condenser that how many tubes are there, very large number of tubes are there, one tube below another tube, below another tube like that, so many tubes are there. So, if so many tubes are there, let us say this is the first tube of a particular tube column, then here the condensate grows, that's, that condensate will fall on the top of the next tube. What I have told? At this point, the tube has got the maximum capacity of condensing steam, here the film is thinnest. For the next tube, I am killing this opportunity because the film from the tube above is falling on it and the film is already thicker here. Not only that, everywhere the film will be thicker. So, whatever heat transfer I will get from the top tube, I will not get from the second tube whatever heat transfer I will get from the second tube, I will not get from the third tube like this. This is called film <coughs> condensation, I mean this is film condensation in tube bundles and this is what happens. Now, slight um, <coughs> relief from this situation one can have if we have this kind of a uh, tube layout which is staggered layout, but in staggered layout also we cannot solve the problem fully. If there is lot of vapor, um, um, uh, vapor activity and if this film falls uh, with a high velocity, then there will be ripples, splashing, turbulence, etcetera. So, probably the situation will be something different. And if there is a vapor flow uh, across the tubes, then it can uh, take care of the um, uh, li um, liquid condensate, 
but even then on the back side there will be some accumulation of condensate. So, this is one thing which deteriorated the rate of heat transfer of a condensate tube. This diminishes the rate of heat transfer of a condensate tube and we are not concerned with one tube or um, see if we see again I will take you back to some figure earlier. So, here if you see how many tubes are there from top to bottom very large number of tubes are there. So, obviously, what is happening to a particular tube we should not be bothered what is happening happening the overall heat transfer coefficient considering all the tubes that should be our consideration. And uh, for that what we have to do uh, the uh, plain uh, analysis of uh, Nusselt which we have done that is inadequate. So, there is one phenomena called effect of condensation in inundation. What is that? That from the top tube film is falling on the tube below it and changing its heat transfer capability. <coughs> Again Nusselt analysis we if we proceed with let us look into the um, uh, let us look into the uh, last uh, diagram uh, sorry last equation second equation of this. Let us say the first tube has got heat transfer coefficient h 1 and nth tube has got a heat transfer coefficient of h n. So, h n by h 1 is given by this particular formula. <coughs> it is depending depending on the uh, which number of tube we are considering from the first tube. And then Considering all such tubes, the average heat transfer coefficient for n number of tubes vertically one after another, vertically one after another, we are considering n number of tubes vertically one after another. This is our number 1 and this is our nth tube. Then for all the nth tube taken together, the mean heat transfer coefficient is given by my given by the formula this one. Okay. This is from Nusselt's analysis. So, you see our heat transfer coefficient will reduce and this we have to take into cognition otherwise our heat exchanger design will not be proper. So, why I am telling all these things because when we will try to design or rather we will try to see the design. See, of a heat exchanger taking an example we we will consider all these kind of things. Here let me tell you that in this kind of a class uh, or other in the classroom any class the heat exchanger design cannot be taken to its fullest extent. You can understand the complexity we will take some example to analysis method towards design that is what is the sole purpose of the course that can be explained to some extent. You can be made familiar, familiarized with different issues. Otherwise, in a practical design of a condenser, it will be really difficult and uh, I mean it is <coughs> quite a few activities iterative procedure which cannot be taken care of in a classroom teaching. But we will try to supply the critical issues, crucial points and the physics which goes behind it particularly from the heat transfer and from the fluid flow point of view. So, uh, uh, continuing with the inundation of uh, condensation if we go to the um, next slide. Huh. So, Karn has proposed actually Karn DQ Karn uh, he has got uh, one very uh, he is a, a stalwart in the field of process equipment um, and he has got one book which you may refer also uh, that is process uh, heat transfer and heat, heat transfer equipment designs are um, discussed there. So, he has given a less conservative relationship where the first relationship gives that nth tube what will be the heat transfer coefficient and the second relationship 
um, uh, that gives that how the average heat transfer coefficient for all the tubes if there are n number of tubes we can determine. So, that means the first tube analysis will be done by Nusselt analysis and then for average heat transfer coefficient we have to reduce the heat transfer coefficient obtained from Nusselt analysis and the factor by which it has to be reduced is given by the formula uh, shown in the last slide and it can also be from the formula it is shown here. And then experimentally people have got some value. So, the experimental value is like this and you see experimental value is having some sort of a constant plus some sort of a power of n where n is the number of tubes in a particular column. So, this is regarding inundation of uh, um, uh, the uh, condensate film and which is very important when we will consider the condenser design. <coughs> so, we will keep it in mind and let us proceed. So, next uh, next slide I like to um, give one problem for practice. This is a very very simple problem we do not have any complexity in it, but even then uh, there should be some sort of a uh, there should be some sort of a uh, practice of what we have learnt. So, that is why I have picked up this problem. So, it says cubicent refrigerant 134 A vapor at a saturation temperature of 47 degree Celsius is condensing upon a horizontal smooth copper tube whose outside wall temperature is maintained constant at 40 degree Celsius. The outside tube diameter is 19 millimeter. Calculate the average condensation heat transfer coefficient of the on the tube. So, basically if we uh, try to if we try to look into this problem. Uh, so, basically what we are looking into let us say we have got one tube. So, this is our tube. Let us say some coolant is passing through the tube and the coolant is passing with sufficient velocity etcetera. So, that the outer wall temperature is kept constant this is T w. So, that is kept constant this is actually T w wall. So, that is kept constant. So, this is also one assumption of Nusselt condensation theory. So, Nusselt condensation theory that assumes that condensation takes place over a over an isothermal surface. So, this is also another assumption. So, as we have shown earlier the, the condensate film will be something like this and this. So, condensate film will grow and uh, Nusselt analysis has given us the given us the um, value of average film thickness over the surface uh, over the tube surface. So, uh, directly we can use this and then if we go back to our previous the average heat transfer coefficient can be calculated using Nusselt expression equation <coughs> some equation number we have given which is irrelevant, but uh, the equation which I have uh, told you uh, this is from some uh, source we have taken this data the thermophysical property of R 134A at 47 degree Celsius are given here this is from some source. Uh, <coughs> so, uh, basically this problem has been taken from the book of Kakas. Um, the heat exchanger book whose reference I have given. So, uh, from there this has been taken uh, so the properties has been taken from that book. <laughs> so, what are the property uh, liquid refrigerant density uh, refrigerant vapor density 
thermal conductivity of the liquid refrigerant, uh, viscosity of the liquid refrigerant and uh, the latent I mean uh, the enthalpy that is also given that should be the latent heat of vaporization that that is also given. Then substituting the equation related to overall heat transfer coefficient, this is just one line. So, we will substitute this this one and we will get the mean heat transfer coefficient like 1620.8 watt per meter square Kelvin. So, this is uh, simple just to uh, show how to use this thing which properties are relevant and uh, this is what we have done and probably this kind of problem you have done already in your heat transfer course. But before going to a uh, really difficult example, we like to show this problem. Uh, with this, we will come to an end of uh, today's lecture and uh, then we will proceed. We have seen condensation on a single tube, then we will see on multiple tube and probably we will go to a heat exchanger, uh, particularly the thermal aspects of it. Uh, so, <coughs> some of the points which I have told are very important, please uh, have a look into that inundation of condensa condensation uh, inundation in condensa condensation particularly when there is a column of tube that is very important, because that has got its effect on the entire condenser design and uh, particularly relevant for steam condenser design. So, this is one point I would like you to. Um, give an attention and probably you can also uh, look into literature from uh, internet to know more about it. Thank you.